on your low back when you're trying. I use it as a head support for two kind work. And I do use a, it's closed cell foam, like Tempur-Pedic. So I do use a pillow case with it. I use pillow cases with all my bolsters because I, I personally don't like my skin touching vinyl. So I don't inflict that on clients either. So which one do you, do you want both? No. <laughs> I was gonna say that could be a little crazy. <laughs> now I'm not sure how your bottom one's on there. I tried the edges. And I, I use quilts, I use cotton sheets. Um, I'm big on natural fibers. Um, environmental reasons, sensitivity reasons, wear and tear reasons, just what your body takes in with the central nervous process system processes. I just think natural you know, cottons, wools, all that's the way to go, working around sensitivities, of course. Um, generally, if I have a client who's sensitive to something, it's not in the practice at all. Uh, for example, I have one who's allergic to coconut. So coconut oil is out of practice. Tree nuts are out of the practice. Um, I have clients who are allergic to aspirin, so I don't use birch oil with them. So the, you start getting twigging to those cross reference kind of sensitivities because it's pretty incredible what's out there once you get going. <laughs> um, I do use quilts. I've always used quilts. Um, for the natural stuff and just because of the kind of that that cuddle thing because one of the first things i discovered in the program was the value of swaddling adults it's amazing how you can get the central nervous system to just drop right down tucking around the shoulders and the last few years i've noticed that weighted quilts or weighted blankets for adults have become really popular mm -hmm. so quilts kind of do that too because there's more to them than just a, a blanket so um, I'm going to stand back and let Zephyr get on the table. And I'm not going to do the, normally I'm like undressed to your level of comfort, but because this is foot only and she's already, and he's, they've already got shorts on. Um, because I do foot massage to the knee. I always work a couple of joints anytime I've got somebody on the table. So I do foot massage to the knee. It doesn't stop at the ankle or lower. So let Zephyr get on the table. Just checking in, saying hi, letting your body know who's, who's around. See, do you have a preference for right or left? Uh, let me know if you get too warm. Sure, thanks. Uh, no. Okay, left to my own devices, I tend to start on the right side of the body. It's an energetic Reiki thing. So I don't know if you guys have started doing any of that kind of work or not. Um, and I'm not, I'm not here to convert anybody to, the, to a belief system. <laughs> um, I just, the more work I do, the more I realize this is part of the package. So if you deny it, you're, denying your clients and you're denying your own potential for this work. So I'm gonna unbreak the right leg. Oh, good. We've got knee coverage. And I tend to go ahead and uncover all the way to the knee because I know I'm gonna talk to that joint too. I'm gonna be on the top of the well. Um One of the things I do about foot massage and I, um, kind of the nature of song tool in my toolkit is that there's no way to dodge it. Um, every time I learn a new technique, I come back to the feet and apply it to the feet. Mild fascia release, ligament stretching, any of that, I come back to the feet and apply it. And that gets me two things. It ramps up my skill set for feet work and it lets you scale the work. 
I can do my, my fascial release in a space like that or a space the length of a lap because I come back to the feet. I'm not tied to, I got to have this kind of setup to be able to pull, hold that stretch to do an MFR stroke. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Where did I lose you? Well, that last sentence, you were, you were trailed off on the sense of two steps. Um, you got the, I, I come back, I can bring everything back to the feet. Oh, okay, got it. And this is why I can scale myofascial release from a space this small to the length of a latissimus dorsi because I play with that. And one of the things too with footwork, with any limb in particular, you, you want to be careful to not ever, ever drop it. Because if you drop somebody's foot or hand or their head, trust is over, you're done. You're done. You got to start from scratch. Even if you finish up that session, you got to start from scratch. It's all based on trust. So if the body gets the memo, I'm going to be in your way all the time. Um, if the body gets the memo, it can't, that you can't be trusted, you're in the doghouse. Okay. You got to come back. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. And I always treat the foot and lower leg as I do the whole body. Contact school, you probably all already have this in your toolbox. I also attach work all the muscles attached at the knee. Did you can get relief on up into the hip from that? Because a lot of them attach both at the knee and into the hip. And as always, if I'm working someplace you're not comfortable or doing something that's not comfortable, let me know, Casey. Yeah. And yes, if my client's been on my table. A month, or if they've been on my table 10 years, they get that reminder every time. That's something I do too, that it, some of my clients like it off the bat, some have to get used to it. Even the ones who get, have to get used to it, it bothers them when I don't do it. I do verbally talk to their bodies. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I've always been difficult with tech too, so it's it getting is it being extra challenged today. And a lot of what I'm doing right now is inventory. Um, I start every session with a checklist that gets augmented when the client tells me what they want to work on. And that checklist is a constantly moving target during the session. I'm always adding to it, addending pulling things off it, something we think it is when we get started, turns out to be something else entirely. Um, so unless I have, I have one client who, that I work under a silence order, but everybody else kind of gets it. Well, okay, we thought it was this, but it's feeling like it's this. So this is where we're going. Are you okay with adding on board? A lot of communication happening during a session. Verbally and non verbally. There we go. That's this is payoff for me. Size on the table, size, snores, any of the parasympathetic sounds, tummy gurgles. You can do that with that light in your face. I'd be amazed. <laughs> Oftentimes I'll hear a snore and then I, then I, I wasn't asleep really. It's like, okay. <laughs> it's <laughs> a safe space. Me. You don't have to be any of that. And now I'm using just kind of a, 
it's a super soft, super broad MFR, basically, just kind of doing some, starting to pull big muscle groups away from bone. A little bit of jostling. MFR being myofascial base. You guys all know you don't work a cold muscle deep. Her, her zipper's foot is um, fussing about having to wait. <laughs> That's why I keep coming down, down to the, that arch and tapping it. And lower leg, you can work really, really well supine because the gastrox in particular will tell you things in this position that they won't if they're flat laying with the bone. The you can get the, the gastrox, the big calf muscles. When they're laying in your hand, they'll tell you a lot more than they will when they're laying flat against the bone. And you get at things better. And as we're all hunched over machines and everybody's shoulders are curling forward and our backs are all screaming about it, I try to keep people face up as much as I can. Because when you're face down, you're curling around the massage table. Okay, this is a ligament stretch that I was, I was gonna do, but he doesn't really need it. The way to test, um, there's a stretch you can do in the ankle that results from the tibia, the big bone in the lower, bus, and lower leg, kind of will tend to drop forward. Just as we walk and get ourselves around, it'll slip forward over the notch in the talus and it can create a hard stop if you do this kind of stretch. Zephyr doesn't really have a hard stop, but I'm gonna show you guys the stretch anyway, because it won't hurt anything. If you hold the calcaneus, hold that heel bone, and your other hand goes in this slot, just, just kind of in the middle of the ankle bone there, and you just press down. And what that does is it stretches the ligaments attaching to the talus and the tibia in that juncture and encourages that space to open up so the bone can drop down. Those are awfully quiet this morning. Is everybody just not awake yet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a very attentive bunch. That will serve you well. Listening is the most important thing you can do in a session. I don't know why you're fessing up your head. And I'm spending more time on the lower leg than Zebra's probably wondering what I'm up to because normally I'm on the foot by now. There's just more stuff going on. So let me get more stuff out of their big muscles before we get into those little guys on the foot. Oh, we went for a walk this morning, Zephyr. So you guys, what are you what are you doing and putting it in your hands yet? Have you started doing 
knots and <coughs> we have been talking about the uh, the crunchies. Well, there's all kinds of stuff you'll find. You'll find slow spots, thick spots, hot spots, cold spots. What do you mean by slow spots? This is an energetic thing, okay? Oh. Like that. <laughs> um, everybody you touch has their kind of their base level of energy. And it will dispense differently across their body depending on what different parts are doing and where, you know, just what's going on with them. Um, knowing how active Zephyr is, pretty much any time I hit a, a quiet spot, it's like, okay, what's going on? Um, and too, with the self-awareness and self-care level with them, then I know that um, something's going on. So you can be running along, it's like, okay, this feels a, a certain way, and there's there'll be a change in temperature, or it's like, well, okay, that was really a quiet spot. What's what's going on there? Is that an, an attachment? Is it a muscle? Is it a knot trigger point? What's going on? Trigger points usually tend to be zingy with people, though. And oftentimes, quiet spots just need a little stimulation from you. And two, as you work and clear things around them, they'll they'll wake up and even out. We have the luxury of believing that the body is all interconnected, that you don't isolate parts of it and pretend they don't exist or don't have anything to do with any of the rest of it. And our guest works has a pretty good lump in it. I would like to see the flat a bit before. And when you're listening to voices too, there will different parts will talk to you in different voices. So don't be a bit surprised. Some will be little kids, some will be grumpy old men, some will be flirts at the bar. It just varies wildly. We are legion. <laughs> And infinitely complex. Okay. You guys get going on trigger points. Um, this tibial anterior, this big muscle in the front of the lower leg, is always a really good place, place to check for those there. What I'm doing with this inner line, this, this spleen line is just a little bit gappy in places. It's not as strong in one place as another. So I'm just kind of doing this, encouraging it to talk more along the whole line. Any questions? Shoot. Uh, trigger points, when you say trigger points, is that like re reflexology related or is it just a no, knot? No, it's a different, there's souped up knots, basically. You'll study them, you'll get there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, I'll have to write that. It's <laughs> <laughs> not too long, it was for shorter stuff. <laughs>
that's the other side. Okay. Now, if I run a table, I tend to work with a couple of these. One is because I sweat like a racehorse. Um, so I'm always having to re-neutralize my hands so I've got the right grip. Uh, I also tend to work with a couple of these because if I, had there not been this additional bolstering here or a big bolster that would set up the whole lower leg, I would tend to bolster ankles as I work just to get the leg off the table and flat and level. That one. <laughs> You want the grounding blade diffused or you want it on? Mm, on. Okay. I always ask about that too because I don't ever put um, citrus oils on anybody. It photosensitizes you. And there's no way to predict how long the effects last or how deeply it's going to affect anybody individually. So I just don't put it on anybody. I'll diffuse it. I've got several that are mad for lemon, but um, I don't put it on anybody. But this one doesn't have any citrus in it. So client gets the option on it. Another thing I use with clients a, a good bit, either when I'm doing deep work that I think is going to leave them sore, or they've got they come in with sore feet in particular from pickleball or hiking, <laughs> hiking 20 miles a day or whatever crazy thing they've been into. Um, I'll use Arnica with them. Again, check for sensitivities. And if they've never been exposed to it, use it really cautiously. Um, because if you see any kind of, if they report any itching or any burning or anything and you, or you see anything, get it off them. Okay. Uh, I hardly ever use more than about a piece size piece anyway. So you don't use tons. It's, it's pretty effective at low doses. Um, but that's one of the things I kind of keep in the toolkit, especially for footwork. I don't know what that is. Arnica? Yeah. Um, it's a plant. <laughs> Sort of I'm trying to remember what it's I think what it's like. Anyway, it's used a lot for sore stuff. Like a mild pain reliever. Like, yeah, something oh, like right. aloe. It's topical. <laughs> yeah. Instead of yeah. So can you pass it around? Yeah, so, we'll pass okay. it around. What it does is it it goes into the cell and encourages the cells to process stuff out. Ooh. So bruises don't last as long. Um, they don't get a sore, that kind of thing. Is it, so it's also good for pain. Don't use it on a broken skin ever. No. That's the one CC about it is broken skin. Yeah. Broken skin. Broken skin. Cut, cut, or anything like that. And if you've got an abrasion, so you've got scrapes and bruising around it, you can use it on the bruising around it. Just don't get it in the, the part that where the skin's compromised. Another thing I use quite a bit is calendula because it's a great anti-inflammatory for the skin, but it's one of those, it's in the daisy family. And there's a lot of plants in the daisy plant daisy family that you can use topically, but if you've got somebody with a sensitivity to have one of them, don't use anybody in the family, okay? So anything, if you've got somebody who's allergic to marigolds or asters, those are all in that family. So anybody reports any of that kind of stuff, make yourself a mental note. It's like, okay, I can't use the calendula for with them. And you might, they might not react across the family, but it's better to not chance it. Our bodies have enough to react to without us throwing things out of them to avoid. And my approach to footwork is pretty basic. Um, I start with the arches. There's the arch that goes across, the arch that goes here. Sorry if there's any tickling. And th this arch. Okay. And I kind of start from those and the bones and work out and work the, you know, between bones and deeply that way. Spots <laughs> 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 Have you 
found Ninja Nerd? Oh, oh man, his A and P lectures rock. Doctor Purple Popper. Oh, I love it. I love Mason Duck. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can look It is. I fell into ear cleaning videos. Oh, oh my yeah. god. <laughs> So sad. I feel so much better about my Vegas nerve fixation. Feeling positively. Now the ankle joint. I don't know how much you guys have looked at the bones of the ankle yet, but the ankle joint is highly flexible. So you can stretch this way, this way, and with zipper you can do it this way pretty good without compromising. You don't want to go crazy and overstretch this out, these outer ligaments. Yeah. But when you have somebody who's a walker or runner, they, they tend to, to be pretty in tune with their feet. Does you neglect and ignore them? No, I did until now. Oh, what a scandal. Oh, I got runner's feet. Right <laughs> you know, the feet really don't get, they don't get the love and attention they deserve. They really don't. And people will come to you be, uh, and be concerned about their balances. We're all getting, we're not aging backwards. We're not Merlin. So people are going to be retirees. They care about their balance and their strength. And they want to talk about their core muscles. It's like, well, um, but you said balance. This is where balance starts. Sole of your foot. It's where you make contact with the earth. And if you've got somebody who's diabetic, you have absolutely got to work their feet. Make sure you let them know of, uh, about anything you're finding, hot spots, plantar warts coming up, anything. Because they're some oftentimes they'll have neuropathy, so they can't feel that. They're not getting the feedback oh. from their nervous systems that cues them that something's going on. That's Ooh. crazy to say that. I just had someone tell me that they have that. Yep. Neuropathy is yeah. pretty common. Yeah. For either nerve damage or diabetes, or they're, I don't know if I'm seeing more about it or what, but there's a lot more. Um, autoimmune disorders that attack the nervous system. You still have a four point stool. They're impossible to find. And what I'm working here is the plantar flexor, and it's that big, broad muscle runs from heel to basically forefoot. And it's a quick, cheap way to get access to the whole foot. When you talk to that one muscle, that's how you work your list of what needs to be honed in on for second and third passes. you'll often get crunches on the edge of the foot. And sometimes we'll get full-blown tension on the edge of the foot because these muscles aren't doing the core work. So when the body's not doing the core work, the, that the, work, the load goes to the outside of the body. So when you get feet that are soft here and here, the, the outer edge of that blade is tight, they've got, they're, they're rolling. They're rolling their foot out. And a lot of times that weakness goes all the way up into the adductor. So you're looking at the whole leg. It's not balancing like it needs to be.
If anybody's got a business or practice questions, I'm a solo practitioner incorporated. So I have a business license for the state and then any municipalities I'm practicing in. I'm also licensed for inter-oral work and small animal. Get my cat to start. <laughs> my cat would not like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can get your cat to be still forth. They're really good to learn on. He loves this. Bert's got the wrong idea when you do that. <laughs> you, you cannot touch. Otherwise, it's like a sexual thing. Mm -hmm. Is it parents? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. really? You cannot touch anything other than like. Feet Another reason for me to not because it, it's considered nice. like they get hormonal. Oh wow, it's little bad birdies. <laughs> <laughs> That's gotta be a pain though. Just be one bigger Raja zone. So. Yikes! Depends on who you ask. Like, there's other things in life, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I need you to tell that to my bird. Right? <laughs> That's yeah. where we get bird brains. You can't get him get him to talk about anything else. Yeah. <laughs> and also, this is this is kind of a goal thing for me in a foot massage to be able to stack someone's toes vertically like that. I don't know if you guys you guys can't see it. I probably can't see it on the screen either because of the angle. But if you can stack someone's toes vertically, they've got pretty dang good flexibility. I have one client that practice I can do that with. Everybody else, it's still a goal. Okay, now I want to try that on my feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the stacking? Mm -hmm. I know for a fact Stephanie's feet do that. Like, don't call me out. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you guys, you guys, learning from each other is powerful. Mm -hmm. Use these nine months. I know. Because it feels like you guys have got a really good cohort too. Yeah. So definitely, yeah, definitely use like your that. safe space, folks. Uh, <laughs> Can you describe what you're doing right now? This is just effleurage. I'm still working that plantar fat flexor. So I've got some tension here that I'm going to come back to and work on a smaller scale. Generally, this, this inner arch from here, hopefully I'm doing this hard enough, I'm not tickling the effort. Um, that zone here, to here because the the muscles by the time they get down here their tendony and ligaments and there there's not a lot of blood supply and they so they stretch pretty frequently and they so they don't have that snapback that the muscles that the muscle bellies get because of the blood supply so it'll get hyper stretched and stay that way and you'll get little knots and crunchies in there that's a good one and this is also a good place to watch your client for pain responses. You get breath hitching or twitchiness when they've been calm, anything like that. Kind of back off, do some more effleurage, warm it up a little more, and then come back. So I noticed um, when I was doing self foot massage, that exact area feels very like nervy and twingy. So when you're, uh, what you just said, you mean um, like kind of warm it up and see if you can get in there without so many. Okay. And I don't, you guys don't have gotten a tennis ball yet. This is where I also encourage clients to use either a tennis ball or a cork ball. Um, footwork is fabulous for doing it. Self footwork is the place to use those tools. Um, I also have a cork ball that's a little bit bigger than a ping pong ball that gets in that space really well. Cork, cork balls are harder. They let you put a little more pressure on, but they aren't they aren't like the those um, fascial tools I see in the gym all the time that, that I call shredders. But because um, you'll see people lay down on them and with cold muscles, 
lay on them and roll the crap out of themselves. And I'm like, all you're doing is shredding fascia. You're not finish, you're not pushing anything out of any tissue. You're not, you know, making any progress for yourself. And you're gonna wonder next, you know, two days why you're so sore. Like, well, hit it to yourself. And then warmth too, especially if you've been out in the cold and you want to try to work your feet, make sure they're getting warm first. Warm soap. Warm tissue responds, responds a lot quicker. Would you recommend like wrapping them in towels or anything like that before? Sure. If that's what you have. I'm I'm kind of like I've got lamb line, um, lamb skin line house shoes, so that's my go-to because that'll warm up your pants up be pretty quick. But wax bags, rice bags, whatever you use, whatever kind of heat thing you use. I'm sorry, going all the way to the knee. Those are fussing because I'm paying attention to this guy, but it's going all the way to the knee. And see when I jostle Zephyr? Watch the top of, of their head. See the motion? That's when you know you've got a nice, calm, relaxed, soft body. My clients kind of you're like, you're shaking my feet while you're watching my head. It's like, because I want to see where the tension is. This tension will tend to either slow down that wave or stop it. And so if you're tracking someone from their feet, that just feels good because you can get some space in the hips and the knees too at the same time. How long have you been doing this? I was in the 2011, 2012 cohort. So my practice is 10 years old this month. Congrats. Congratulations. And so how long did you feel? I mean, because when you start doing that, you just, feeling the things, right? And so how long was it before you kind of felt comfortable? I guess, like, you know, that real comfort level of, like you, you're talking a lot about like the energies and feeling and that has to come from practice, right? Oh no. <laughs> Not necessarily. Um, part of it comes from feeling confident that you're competent to do the work and not hurt someone. Um, I don't bring ego to it. Um, there's, there, there's nothing to gain for anybody. Um, and that's also when you stop listening, when you're not listening to a client, you might as well just stop it. Um, I think I got confident enough to to put my hands on someone by the time I got through the program. But um, I always approach every, I approach every session with the intention of respect and trying to be conducive to health, but understanding that I'm not all that can be, I'm not the be all and all. Um, I had a client a couple of days ago want to refer somebody to me and I said, well, um, okay. <laughs> um, but a, of the, the people who get referred to me, I only actually take about one in six, one in five or six, because so this is not arrogance on my part, I promise. <laughs> I have a 15 minute to a half hour conversation with them. Mm -hmm. If they want a technique I don't do, or I'm not at that level of, I'm a generalist. I can get you started with craniosacral myofascial release or ligament work or a number of other things. But if you need exclusive craniosacral work, if you're trying to realign your dentition or something, it's like the, you need to be in the hands of an expert. So I'm referring you, I'm referring, and I give you a list of things. Uh, people want availability, I, I can't do. 
So I have those conversations with people and, you know, cause it's, it's, it's body work is expensive. <laughs> I mean, um, I'm grateful my clients are still coming back, but, and I'm not expensive as, as rates go, but, um, I'm, I mean, anybody's got, as far as I'm concerned, that's, you know, that is in time for 15 minutes conversation, try to get them to a practitioner or a handful of practitioners who are more suited to what they need out of body work. Body work is a vast, wide industry, and you, you've got to know what you are good at and what each of you are good at. So each of you, as you develop your own specialities in your hands, what makes the sense to you, what makes, what works best for you, keep track of what each of you do because you're gonna to need to be able to refer, okay? And some, some my colleagues have kind of pushed back on me about that. I'm like, look, cause they're like, well, you're not trying to build your business. I'm like, well, I'm also, it's what's best for the client. It's what's best for the industry. And I do no harm. Do no harm. If you can't face yourself and say that at the end of the day, you've messed up. And if I'm trying to work with somebody whose body doesn't want to work with me, sometimes you just don't match. That happens too. You can't know that until they're on the table, but sometimes they're just, and I tell clients, like I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but I can maybe help them find who is. Work from home or do you I work out of my home and I do alcohol work. All the pet work is alcohol work because I want to see them in their own in their own home. Can you explain that technique that you're doing? I don't know what to call it. <laughs> um, I do this quite a bit. Um, I've got, I found a line and you can find this in various places on the body where, where you can kind of get into a, what is the leeward side of the mountains where the, it's the shadow, the rain shadow, but um, you can drop down between a bone and a muscle. And I will pull the muscle away from the bone and then fold it back over okay. the thumb. That's what it looks like. But so that's like what I'm doing. Between the yeah. shadow of the camera. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm doing. Works really well on the feet. Uh, forearms are a really good place for it. It looks like it feels really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, so yeah, it is. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I don't know what to call it because it's kind of just, it's really sort of a folding plus a pressing. Yeah. So it's, can you do that again on the shin? The, uh, the camera didn't quite get it. Okay. If if your trough is here, yeah. and what you're looking for is a, is, is a line that's a that dips between a bone and a muscle. Okay. So I'm, what I'm doing is putting a thumb there and then rolling the this muscle back against it. Thank you. Part of what it's doing it it helps loosen both sides I think because it resets the the spindle fibers in the muscle that determine how long the muscles extract or is, is um, expanding or contracting to. So it's kind of a twofer. I don't know. It looks like a burrito tucked in. It kind of does, yeah. <laughs> That works. Like, you're like rolling a cigarette and you have to do like the flex oh. to get the <laughs> Sound or smoking something that's actually tobacco instead of yeah. You know, you buy a big drum. All the other stuff is in cigarettes anymore. Now what I'm doing, is that I, I do tend to do the toes as part of my closing. So this is a starting to wind it up thing. And because this is the right side of Z's body, 
I am doing working outside, inside the outside. Okay, on her left side, I would be working outside the inside. There's no reason to do it. You don't have to do it this way. This is just, <laughs> just how I do it, and that's why. And what I, I do, I go down to the base of each one of them. Side note, can you be careful with your points? I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. I think we all are. Do you have uh, kind of like a pincher on each side of the joint? Oh, okay. yeah, I'm just holding the joint. And I do tend to, because Zephyr doesn't like that. There's a technique that's a pull and, and flip kind of thing. And having and knowing that um, that's not something Zephyr likes. But I do like traction. And you can do this in these really tiny joints. And, and toes are an excellent way to learn. Toes and fingers are the best place to learn that really small joint traction. that with my daughter's toes and they pop even if they're gentle well it just means i mean they, they were seeking realignment i mean I, I often get pops and cracks out of toes and feet oh there was a nice one and you don't have to be pulling some people see me pulling and i think i'm applying a lot of <laughs> yank and I, I just I'm really not for one thing if you apply a lot of yank you start getting resistance from the body mm -hmm. body's only going to tolerate so much manipulation before it goes wait a minute <laughs> I'm not sure I want to go along with that there was a video I watched and I believe you were stretching the toes are you going to give an example of that as well because I was wondering how Nice. This is a bad thing about being on video. I'm not entirely sure what I did. Oh, all right. Oh, oh. is that the one I, yeah, I liked? The one oh, you okay. Wanted. It was like when you were pulling really your toes and then stretching them. Like, uh, you know, yeah. well, that's a like a doing kickstands kind of. and stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah, I would have to like pull the joints and make a wish. Let me, get, let me get the last little toe joint stretched and we'll do, we'll do some of that crazy stuff. <laughs> Before the final screen comes in. <laughs> well, not if the tissue's soft and warm and everybody's good and relaxed. Mm -hmm. Those of you on the right probably can't see this at all. Ah, but this is something you really don't want to do with a cold foot. And I'm tractioning at the same time, too. There's a little bit of pull to it. Too much motion on that. And generally after I do kind of that level of intensity work, I'm focusing on joints or something, I'll, I'll do long strokes after. So the transition, you're always checking to, to see if you've missed something somewhere. Because this gas truck has been, has presented quite the package of to-do list today, I'm kind of checking back in with it too. I'm also not averse to leaving tension somewhere sometimes or leaving it not because you have to weigh, and this is a conversation to have with the client too. You have to weigh the value of getting a tissue completely clear 
versus having overworked it and potentially even bruising. Mm -hmm. You can do that kind of damage. And sometimes it's like, no, that knot's been there for six months. I'm sick of it. Just get it out. I don't care if you have to dig it out with a blade. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and I make a note in my session notes. And make sure it gets hit with a little dab of arnica before they get off the table. That kind of helps ease things. It doesn't happen very often because as I practice longer, I learn more ways to be gentle and to do work effectively without digging. Um, so that's helping that kind of stuff too. I'm about to stand up. Yeah, normally I work on work both. I just work in one day for that one, right, Pepper? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this, is, this is probably going to feel really strange because one side's been more summons, the other side has it. I like to do a lot of um traction requirements. I guess they get and then mm -hmm. some angles all the breathing space. And they're, they're all under compression all the time. So this is just a breather for everybody. You don't have to do anything hard. This is just my body weight. I'm not yanking on anything. I tend to hold things 20 to 30 seconds and try to do them in groups of three. All right, some jostling. Because the gentle jostle, <clears throat> once they, I mean, especially once you've worked with, with them, um, is it's more signals to the central nervous system to relax and kind of. You're still safe. It's okay to relax. And my scoliosis clients insist on this. Mm -hmm. Like if they think they're gonna get through session and not get this, they're like, uh, where's my stretch? <laughs> mm -hmm. And sometimes clients will <clears throat> release enough that you the like some of my taller ones, they, they sometimes are hanging off the table by the time we get to the third repeat of this because they were close to start with and this will get them in a quarter of an inch. I measured a client before and after doing that. We we got three quarters of an inch in height. Yep. Well, you start the day taller than you are when you go to bed too. So. Mm -hmm. Women's do amazing things. So for closing, you can come in and do a, a couple of acupressure points. It's, I never get them right. It's kidney one and liver three. Let me show you guys where they are. Liver three is up there, kind of between where the set first and second toes come together. And kidney one is that there's a little heart shaped spot on the bottom of the foot. Other than that. So this is a good way to end with the foot. You can also do toe tips. One of what's really nice about toe tip too is you can feel the energy ping back and forth and regulate. There's a temperature better this way. Although you can get temperature reads from the other from that acupressure hole too. It looks weird, but it is actually really relaxing. And I'm kind of careful. I used to tuck feet all the time until I realized if I don't untuck them, they can't get off the table safely. <laughs> so I tend to not tuck feet so much anymore. <laughs> and I just tend to come back and hold the ankle before I actually step away from the client. What I'm doing is just sending 
good neutral energy throughout Zephyr's body, resetting intentions for everything that comes out from the day to be of a positive nature, positive results.